We live? We live. We live. We live. Welcome back to the Opinion Factory Podcast, the podcast for free thinkers and challenge seekers. Yes, sir. I'm Khalil. I'm Alex. I'm Kyle. And here we have today our guest, the future Oscar winner, mm-hmm. the the actor, mm-hmm. the self proclaimed liberal Catholic. I didn't even know that can exist, honestly. Liberal Catholic. Yeah, liberal Catholic. We got Kyle in the building, man. What's up? What up, Kyle? Polemic much? <laughs> it's like, wow, that's, that's one. No, yeah, it's, uh, what is this? After months of, of trying, I'm finally here. I made it. There you go. Romney. <laughs> Romney and uh, Laurent, eat your hearts out. <laughs> Good to have you, man. Welcome, man. Welcome. Yeah, Thank li- you for, liberal thank Catholic, you man. I didn't, know, I didn't know that could exist. Yeah. Sounds Pretty like oxymoronic. S- yeah. Yeah, no, it's definitely two schools of thoughts kind of clashing in with each other at times, but um, it's all about the, the person themselves to sort of discern which way to follow and when to do it. But if you don't follow the specific religious aspects, can you still be like that religion, though? I think so. I think we live in a time where we can seek out information that we need to sort of test facts on both sides. And we can we can come to a conclusion that hey you know I want to believe this school of thought but I still want to hold on to these morals and if you're if you're a person who says that you're someone who can who can respect facts and still be true to yourself I think there's a middle ground there where you can be at peace with yourself. Right. Now, I'm not saying it's easy, <clears throat> but I think it can happen. But like, can you still say you know I'm Catholic but gay people are all right? <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> <laughs> myself or in general, <laughs> no, just just in general. Just in you general know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, cause I know, I know, you know, a lot of very religious people have mm-hmm. issues, very, very big issues with certain things like abortion, homosexuality, you know, certain mm-hmm. foods and stuff like that. So, like, can you say you're Muslim if you don't really believe that eating yeah. meat is really a bad thing? You know pork, what I mean? Yeah, pork, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, how can you reconcile scientific, you know, belief and and religious belief? Right. In, in those regards, because I feel like you can't be 100% of both at the same time. No, you can't. You ha- you're going to have to be like 50-50. But even they can be 50 But that's the thing. Can you be 50-50? Like, if you're 50-50, then people are going to be like, oh, you're not a religious person. Like, you know what I'm saying? No, but then you still can be, though. See, because I think, I think I'm of the belief that you can be both religious and scientific. Mm-hmm. I think that being scientific might actually, you know, deepen your faith. Even. Depends on what faith you go on, though. In some ways, if you like, believe in a higher power, I know learning the laws of nature could help deepen your faith. But that was like the the Muslim thing. Like I remember reading about history, religion. Muslims use that like curiosity to like further question things, and then that mm-hmm. thing would come back to like, oh, God created this way. Whereas versus Christianity, it was very very restrictive. Mm-hmm. Right? You have like the dark ages. You have like, oh, what the hell is this? You're a witch. I'm burning mm-hmm. you at the stake. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I, I think it depends on your religion, though. I feel like with the, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to focus generalize, on. but it, it could also be like, I don't know, people people recoil a lot more when it's their religion being hit yeah. rather than their scientific beliefs. Like when it comes to, like you said, like witches or quote unquote witches and all that, or, you know, the earth is in the center of the galaxy and stuff like that. Because it's like, I guess when you answer questions that you didn't know the answers to that you thought was God, but now there's actually an answer. It kind of takes away the power of yeah, God in a lot yeah, of people's yeah, eyes, yeah, and does, they don't like that. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So that's why a lot of religious people antagonize science because it kind of like takes away God's power in a way, mm-hmm. the, the way that they see it, even though it doesn't necessarily do that. I think the reason for that, though, I mean, maybe you elaborate as as a more religious person is like, because hey, God did this, God did that, and now it's like, if not only might not be true, but then it's like, what else might not be true now, right? If I say God created heaven and earth. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh no, this is how heaven and earth created. Or if I say this is, he created mountains, mm-hmm. and like mountains came to be this way right. through weather and erosion, exactly. all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Now it's like, oh, if that's not true, then maybe the whole thing isn't true. Right. So how do you even like? How do you? So if you attack one piece, you're attacking the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> because you, because you're not even attacking, but questioning. Yeah, because you're attack, you're questioning the 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 truth in it though. And if right. you find something that's not true and you're supposed to believe it. Then it's like, okay, if this isn't true, what else might not be true? Right. Because now I can't even, it's not even a trustworthy source anymore. No, I feel like there's definitely, I mean, depending on your religion, there's going to be a few staple points that you have to believe regardless. Because if you don't have faith in those staple points, sure. then you have no business following <laughs> that religion. So right. I, so but I, can't, I, think that I can't be Christian and pray to, to Allah? No? 
What? I mean, pray to God. <laughs> 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 pray the the one true God, both religions. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I think that when you like, you even if you do have those key principles that you do believe in, mm-hmm. when you peel the layers back on all the teachings in the religious and what the stories in the respective books are advocating for, there's a moral guide regardless of what religion you follow. And if you can stay true to what your moral guide is telling you, then you can respect advances in science and still be true to the teachings of what kind of people we're supposed to be. But what if the moral guide is incorrect, though? You know, like, you see the science behind it, and it's just incorrect. Like, for example, what if you just... I mean, I'm not saying this has happened, but you Mm -hmm. just say, like, you just see something where it's like, you know, one thing that people always say, homosexuality isn't natural. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. And oh, then, it's immoral. They're abominations. Is the word that the yeah, Bible yeah, uses. yeah. But and and the reason the argument before because it, it's not natural, right? But then what if you find it in like other species and you're like, oh damn, it actually happens in nature. Mm. And now it's kind of like, oh, my belief in this that it was unnatural mm-hmm. is just like completely fractured by the actual facts. Right. And so, I think and I, I don't think the, I think we can find a better example than that. But you, but you don't understand what yeah, I'm saying. I what though. You're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the reasons for that is like there's a scientific method, right? So there's no hypothesis in science that's presented you know, in a public way that hasn't been thoroughly tested. Mm-hmm. But does religion have that same rigorous you know, gauntlet that it has to go through before it becomes generally accepted? Or is it just that someone in power or someone who was believed to be inspired by a higher power right. just chose to wrote these words and then there was right, right. no rigor, there was no vetting or, at all. Yeah. And so whatever they believed themselves mm-hmm. at the time became to be the truth. And of course, if that's never checked, that's going to get challenged and might be disproved right. in the future. Right. And so I think that's one of the main differences between why, you but know, like then, you said. Yeah, but then let's go back on this, though. How many times has science been wrong? Science has been wrong, like, thousands and thousands of times. Mm-hmm. Like, like literally, like, freaking, like, the number one medicine used to be, oh, he's sick, let me just <clears throat> give him some leeches. But when know, it happens. Or just let his butt out, you know what I'm saying? But when it happens, there's no, you know, you can't tell me this is wrong in the scientific community. No oh like no that. no no no! There is no, there is not though, at there all. Is, though. There's there's a lot not of like put, there's, I think there's a, definitely uh, maybe clashes. Not, yeah, maybe of not like like religion. schools of thought. Like, yeah, because someone believes that one theory completely eradicates another point that someone was trying to make in their own theory. There's definitely like oh we're gonna keep this this scientist and their their research group outside of as many publications as we can. See, we keep using the word belief. Yeah, there there, there shouldn't be any belief in science. But there's belief. In, I mean, there has to be belief in science because. You, you don't no, act, I'm saying what, what do you actually know, method? though? Is it I'm belief saying, or acceptance? Yeah, that's another thing, too, yeah. That's a good question, actually. Yeah, like, are, do you accept your faith or do you believe in your faith the same way? Do you accept science or do you believe what's being happened? Yeah, so I think that's a good question. I think with faith is accept uh, belief, and then with science is acceptance. Uh-huh. But what I'm saying is when, 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 when someone challenges a scientific thought, like if someone shows up tomorrow mm-hmm. and say, you know, gravity is a hoax, and I can prove it to every scientist who wants to, to challenge me. Then I'll be like, you can't tell me gravity is always going to say, show me, show me how, show me why. And if you can prove it, I will accept it. There's not going to be that from the religious community, I don't feel like. If you come and say, you know, God is a hoax to a Catholic church, then they say, okay, show me, show me. Show me. They're going to say, no, God is real. Come, let me show you why. I feel like that's mostly what's going to happen. I'm not debating that either. But at the same time, scientists, like, scientists don't rely on like, science for like, their, their moral being either. Right, you're not you're not questioning their lifestyle. If I'm coming to you, if I'm coming to you, right? I'm like, yo, God isn't real. God is a hoax. Mm-hmm. And so it's just question my whole lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And then you could even take it further, where it's like it's just question my intelligence. Like, mm-hmm. oh, how can you devote yourself to something that you don't see or hear? It's like, because when I when I come off like that, it's like a superiority type mm-hmm. complex. Oh, so does that come mor- like a connotation of morality? With yeah, religion, yeah, yeah, exactly, with exactly. No, I exactly. get that. I get that a lot. Yeah, I think. I mean. And especially when we look at this in sort of the historical point of view, along the way, there's been people who weren't educated enough to seek out alternate opinions because they couldn't read or they couldn't write Mm -hmm. or they didn't have the resources to to look up different schools of thought. So the only resource they had was to listen to the head figure of the religion in their proximity and listen to what sort of that person was saying the message was. Right. And I mean, still until this day, if you're going to look at how religion sort of mitigate how times have changed along the way, it's always the person leading the religion <clears throat> that's sort of pushing for one understanding or the other. I mean, you look at Catholics, for example, and you have right now in Pope Francis someone who 
I have heard from a lot of people who are not religious, you know, I may not be religious, but listening to how uh, the head of your church speaks about people who have been discarded or pushed aside He's gives right. me faith uh, in what yeah. kind of a leader he is. So I think that, you know, people weren't able to make their own decisions, so you had to accept face value whatever the person at the top said is the agenda for your religion. You look at the Bible and it's like, the Bible has been rewritten by every king who ruled a certain nation <laughs> to benefit them in some way or another. Exactly. I mean, Henry VIII created yeah. the Anglican Church because the Pope wouldn't annul his wouldn't annul his marriage, so he could, you know, marry someone else. Right. So it's like it's. Wait, that's why the, one of the Bibles got written just to get divorced. Yeah, the the Anglican Church sort of. You know that? And, I didn't know that. Bro. Yeah. He needed he needed a son. His wife couldn't give him a son, so he's like, yeah, I don't want you no more. Yeah. He had like he had like five. He had like six wives. Right. And, and so now there's people who are deeply rooted in his Bible, when it was just written so he could get. I mean, it was basically just like we're not we're gonna do with everything. We're gonna keep the same teachings, but no more pope. Pope doesn't matter yeah. anymore. I can get the divorce. Yeah, I can get divorced now. Divorce oh, so now yeah. we can get divorced because yeah. the Pope was okay. okay exactly, because okay, okay. the Pope wouldn't approve of the divorce. I thought he changed yeah. the teachings to make divorce okay. No, no. <laughs> in the Bible. No, no, but he, he created the, other the one. subsect to say like the one person who kept me from doing what I wanted to do is now not going to matter for anyone else because I want to be able to do what I want to do. Damn. Yeah. Which I find interesting because if you look at it now, you know, a lot of I feel like a lot of religious people kind of say that the scientific community are all conspiring to push this agenda. What I think historically has been the other way around with the religious people pushing a particular agenda that benefited them at the time, mm -hmm. kind of like with your example. Yeah. And so I feel like it's harder for the scientific community to, to, to dupe mm -hmm. the masses because of how, just how much stuff, you know, a hypothesis has to go through. Gotcha. You can say that, but at the same time, like, like there's no, like you said, there's no belief in science. So if you just say, like if you're, for example, let's bring up like evolution. You say the Pope is the one that makes like the religion evolve, but is that really how like religion should work though? Because the book hasn't evolved, but right. the leader of that mm -hmm. religion has evolved, yeah. and so now the religion evolves. But going back historically, mm -hmm. you know those leaders use it to push their own agenda. Right. So right. you understand? So how how can we even like we look at this religion mm -hmm. if the book's not if the book's getting rewritten by people? Mm -hmm. The book was written by people, right. Mm -hmm. right? So how do you how do you look at that evolution compared to science, where it has to go through the, all those measures, like you said? Right. And so if like something's not true, oh, okay, we'll be able to correct this, right? And there's no there's no like hostility towards you for correcting it. It's just like okay, right. that's cool. Yeah. You actually then, want to be correct. But if I correct if I correct him, it's yeah. like or or the church, mm -hmm. it's like what? No, it's not how it is. And, you, and why I think and the better why? I think the better oh, hold on real quick, I think the better argument would just be easier to say oh okay we didn't know that. And this is how God made it. That would no. that, that, just be like the simpler, the easiest argument to make. Where it's like, I didn't know this was right, or I thought it was this way. It can't be, because... Because the book said it? The difference is that... The book that was written 2,000 years ago said it? People don't make science the foundation of their beings, like they do with religion. Yeah, and yeah. So to change your entire foundation it takes a lot of work. It can't be as easy as, oh, I gotta, you know, I'm just gonna change this. It's like saying, you know, you, know, you wanna make an addition to your house. You gotta rebuild the thing from the ground up if you wanna change your interpretation of a particular religion. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's why people are so, so, you know, hesitant to accept new viewpoints in a religion because that's the you're questioning like who they are as a person, like their foundation, their being, their existence. You don't do that with a, with a scientific person. I think we got to exercise some of that free will that God gives us in order to make a decision on what truly you know makes sense in modern day and what not for mm -hmm, example mm -hmm. like if we if if a religion spurred up thousands of years ago that told us all that you know eating glass was a healthy thing to do <laughs> and in the future Ooh. now we could we could look at that and be like well no the glass is going to cut up your intestines that's definitely yeah. not something smart you should be doing then we can use our free will to say like you know maybe this was preached but i can I can pretty easily figure out that this isn't the right thing we should be doing. Mm -hmm. And like your church has to work in unison to sort of set that message along, like or else, you know, you, you find yourself, if you think about things way too much, you're gonna drive yourself crazy. You have to, you have, to have a line of acceptance, mm -hmm. right? Like a lot of people who are very, very self-proclaimed religious people, they follow the customs, they stay true to going to, to mass or to church when they need to. I mean, they're sitting in church and they're gossiping, they're thinking about, you know, things that they're going to do that are ungodly as soon as they leave church. Of course, and, of course. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, they're not being good Christians outside of being in church itself. Right. 
Like, Even the parking I, lot be like a war zone, bro. Like right, just to get out. Like right, you, we right. just came from church, bro. Right. <laughs> Let me through. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so it's like I mean, I mean, sometimes I feel like going to church for me. I'm like while I do while I don't feel like it necessarily may bring me closer to God than praying intensively would mm-hmm. be on my own. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's discipline. And one of the things that you know the cat the Catholic doctrine taught me was like discipline yourself in certain regards so that you can be true to you know the goals you want to achieve Mm -hmm. and sometimes i feel like you know i'm in a tough place if i go to church on sunday and i leave once i leave i'm like wow i feel like a burden has been lifted off of me and i didn't i didn't have any answers shown to me in mass but i feel like that's what my soul needed Mm -hmm. i just needed to be there that's true to feel cleansed and it's like my thinking didn't think i didn't evolve you know, to think a different way about a morality aspect that I did before I went to Mass that day. Right. But it was like the act of being there, like, cleansed me. No, and I get I what feel, you mean. Yeah. I get what you and mean. Like, like, you feel holy when exactly. you Exactly. It's like, it's, it's a discipline thing, too. It's like, it's like you, follow, you follow the guide that makes you believe you're the person you want to be. And also, like, as a sacrifice, you discipline yourself and you attend Mass so that you can gain more of that so there's that empowering aspect with religion yeah. that science well, doesn't really have yeah and i get that but well, d- or does it do me off a little bit do me off a little bit because i was going to ask this question about this identity can you call yourself catholic mm-hmm. if you're doing all these things that aren't necessarily in that catholic doctrine though? right you like know wearing what I'm different fabrics <laughs> yeah <laughs> or i mean shrimp maybe, and yeah, pork or, yeah yeah <laughs> but like things like that and you can say okay this is dumb but then how much of that does that change your religious right. identity, though? Right. Like, ca- how can I say, like, I'm a, I'm a Catholic now? Yeah. Right, I'm but like you fall- said, like, I feel like you need to have that cornerstone you, faith. You do have the cornerstone. Yeah. You do have the cornerstone faith, but you're not following the customs that also yeah. make you Catholic, though. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get what you're saying. Yeah, you're so so you're not as devout right. as yeah, you could right. be. Yeah, if I'm this thing and I don't do There's a lot of the stuff right. that a lot of the things says to do. Right. There's degrees to it, definitely. Yeah, can, yeah, yeah. so that's what I'm saying. So can you, wouldn't that just be like a different... Not maybe a domination, but like a different section of that belief. Though. A lot of people say now that they're not religious, that they're just spiritual. Spiritual. Or they right. just believe in God. But right, they but they don't subscribe. Practice. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I know people like yeah. that. I think regardless of what your practice is, the important message is what your faith is and is between you and God. Whoever your God may be, as long as you're being true to your faith between the two of you, Mm -hmm. because you can, I mean, in every religion, we can speak to God whenever we want, right? That's our intimate, that's our connection with God. God is always listening. Can you do that in Buddhism? Can you, don't you have to go to like a statue? No, no, Buddha's not not God, though. I know, but we're talking about just religion in general. No, but he's, I don't know. Well, yeah, oh, don't, yeah, don't call me on every religion, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but at least with some of the ones but, I understand. Yeah. I mean, the connection between you the and God, is, yeah. the, the yeah, yeah. mic line is always on. Right. So you can just speak into it, and God will be on the other side. I mean, the same way that, you know, in Catholicism, you're forgiven for your sins if you ask for confession. Mm-hmm. So it's like, regardless at the end of the day, whether I believe the take that my priest had on a topic at church, or whether I'm sitting in there listening about the creation of the world, but I may believe in evolution. Mm -hmm. It's like, whoever is going to judge me for having these beliefs or not is God's. So if I believe I'm leading my life as a good person, who's going to be redeemable at the end of the day? Which is true, but it's different from from the place you're in, though. So it's like you're in this place and you're just disagreeing. But it's like, oh, this is what the book told me. But now we have different interpretations. It's like, am I really? The, that's another that's thing. That's like complicated, though. That's right? another thing with, with the a difference between religion and science. The different denominations of religion conflict with each other a lot, but the different you know fields of study and science mm-hmm. don't. I feel like they more work on to interact with each other or try to get like better understand. Like astro uh, astrophysiologists will try to get with like physicists, right? They're and more try to figure out like how. Like quantum theory works. Right. So right? I feel like you're telling the me scientific that rabbis, <laughs> priests, and uh, you know imams don't walk into bars. <laughs> is that what you're telling me? No, no, I don't think it's gonna be a happy bar after yeah, all. No, no, for real though. For so real. the scientific community is more cooperative, while the religious community as a whole is more competitive. I would even say, rather than cooperative, because well, everyone wants to be the one religion that has the most people. Is that a science versus religion thing, or is that just like a, how religion just is though? I mean. It, you know what I'm saying? That is one of the, the differences. That is wh- how religion is, and that is but how science is, but that's definitely... One of the, the things I think about science and, and just really versus religion mm-hmm. is, like, the... There's a decent number of people that won't get their kids vaccinated or they won't even get medical treatment. 
just because, oh, it's God's plan, <laughs> you know, or uh, he, there's all the natural medicine that we can find. All we need is herbs, spices, mm -hmm. uh, mineral oil. Homeopathy. All the, all the, yeah. herbs and spices. <laughs> <laughs> that's the biblical right. number? Uh, the that's 43, like, uh, the, the KFC. KFC. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, if those people, they, I feel like almost everyone is like that to some degree. Maybe not to the degree that everyone where yeah, everyone, everyone. And, I, and I'll bring up an example, but everyone to that example where it's like, I believe in science, but there's levels we're taking it too far. Where it's like, oh, I have, okay, okay, you know okay, what I'm saying. Okay. So it's like, if I was gonna tell you, oh, we can we can clone your we can clone your dog, mm -hmm. you'd be like, all right, let me let me let me chill out a little bit, right? Or we can like we have the technology to freeze your brain and, and to freeze all your organs and you can come back in 200 years. People are like, oh, let me, let's chill out a little bit right there, right? And I feel like with that, I, I think that's why people hang on to, to the religious aspect more because there's a, there's a more moral high ground. We all, have that, we all have that type of thing where it's like science can go, just go way too far. Oh, yeah. Right? Like yeah. science is, is going way too far. And with religion, going too far doesn't mean like breaking the natural cycle of life. Right, you know what I'm saying? Like, it if, doesn't if, mean war, though. It could mean war, but war is a natural cycle of life, though, right? War is natural. War, war, is, war is pretty natural. Conflict natural or is war natural? I, I, I'd say human war. nature. I'd say like conflict maybe, natural, but war. Yeah, maybe not war in the sense you're thinking of just like soldiers and armies, but it's like war. It's like, oh, this tribe has one thing, and the other tribe has something else. We're gonna steal the other tribe's stuff, and we'll fight to death for it. I think like that's an anthropological yeah. Sense. I think that's pretty natural. It happens with apes all the time, chimpanzees, all that stuff. I think it's pretty natural. Okay. Where even hunter gatherers would fight other hunter gatherers who had like the better land or the better, okay. the better materials. Okay. Okay. Right, sure. so like, if, but if not, I'm, not over yeah, their beliefs, so if I'm, over if their I'm, survival. If I'm the scientist guy, I can take it way too far, and now I'm playing God. And everyone, <clears> even <throat> the not religious people, will be like, "Oh, you're playing God. Like you're going way too far. You're gene splicing, doing all this type of stuff." Are we playing God? I say we. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, you're not. Yeah, yeah, but no, but it, it will feel that way as compo as opposed to like if I take religion too far, maybe maybe like society becomes a little more oppressive or depending on the, the religion you have. Mm -hmm. But it's never like something where it's like, okay, this is so wrong that I'm breaking like nature well, itself. I would argue that when religion goes too far, they kind of do play God because they control almost, they try to control almost every aspect of your but life. But it's controlling society. I feel like controlling society is different than controlling like actual, life. yeah, actual <laughs> life. Like if I'm out here, I'm like, yo, I'm going to clone your cat. I'm going to clone you, Kyle. So I would argue you know that the power of the power of life or death over someone is the power of God. I, I could argue that with you. You can argue, I mean, we could argue that, but then it's like, if I want to die, let me die. I feel like, you know, it's like, especially in, in regards to the question of like, if you need treatment, so should you seek it out from a professional capable of treating you? Or should you just let, you know, God and God's will take its way? Mm -hmm. It's like, it personally, I think it's possible to have a belief that, you know, God gave the person giving you the treatment the ability to treat you so, there you that, go. <laughs> so that he could treat you in this exact moment when you ask for help. You know, there's like this saying in like Brazil, it's like this this anecdote and for those of you who don't I know. I think I know Brazilian, what you're about to talk about. Um, there's this anecdote that's like there was an old man. Um, in a flood in his yes, town yes, and, yes, he yes. Was, and he was like in the water and he was like God save me so then a fire truck goes by him and he and the firemen are like come on come aboard and he's like no no God's gonna save me mm -hmm. and then he goes by a tree and he doesn't hang on and he's like no no God's gonna save me and then like a log goes by and people are on it like with their hand out like hop on board and he's like no 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 God's got this he's gonna save me and then like he dies and gets to heaven and then he questions God like why didn't you save me and God's like I sent you a fire truck, a tree, right. a log, and with people to like h help you hang on to, and you said no to all of them. Right, and so they're so looking for a miracle instead yeah. of like a practical solution that God Himself. Right. Very but God's all you. powerful though, so God, like I think in this belief set that you have, God can just save you just because He got but that he power. But He sent you a fire truck. That takes a lot of power, bro. I want God to directly. You cure want God me. to lift you and levitate you out the water. I want God to have me wake up tomorrow. I don't have cancer anymore. Instead of you going to get chemo. Yes. You don't think God made it so that there was enough advancements in medical, in the medical field so that you could get chemo when you needed it? Too, you don't com think too complicated. How, okay. That's not how it was. It doesn't but they also say God works in mysterious ways. Who says that? A lot of people. A lot Does of the Bible say that? say that? 
Does it? I think so. I mean, I think if we don't, I think if we don't accept that, we'll never be, we'll never be satisfied with anything. Right, because <laughs> I feel like too many open-ended questions. No, but yeah. honestly, but honestly, you can't explain everything. The, you God, God works, the God's so. plans versus like free will thing is a, is a really different philosophical right. argument right. to have. <clears throat> but it's a, it's a really interesting one. And this is dog. something you were saying before with the with the free will thing, because I was saying kind of like what I was saying before, like when religion becomes too oppressive, they mm-hmm. control almost every aspect of your life, and then they take away your free will. Right. And that's one of the tenets that God gave us. That's one of the gifts that He gave right. us. So why would you take that away right. when it comes to you know what I believe in, what I do with my body, right. yada yada yada. Right, right. Yeah, I think it's definitely like it's on you to sort of. As individuals, we have to we have to navigate the free will in a way that's always going to come up positives for ourselves because everything's an evaluation oh, for us to be judged at the end. But when you look at how others, like those in the power to manipulate the way our religious doctrines are being taught, use that free will to mend the story in one way or another, mm-hmm. then you get to the root of things, which is everything is political. So someone in power is going to change the narrative to help their politics or yeah, their, their history, desires, really. right? Yeah. So it's like when you look at like uh, the colonization of the Americas, you have Jesuit priests that were coming over, and you have uh, stories being taught like um, mestizos and slaves. It's all right if we suffer now because we'll reap it all in the afterlife. Oh yeah, the beatitudes. <laughs> right, and so Less it's like, the poor, for they should ha- right. inherit the the riches. Right, right. Like exactly. that. Don't, get, don't get me started on. And uh, it's like, when did that, that did that surmise from someone in power who needed it has the to be. Right? Of course, right? a poor person would what say, "Blessed are the poor." What, what, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, man. What kind of scam is? Oh, your life's gonna be trash. Right. But when you die, it's all good, bro. I got you when you right. die, bro. Give me like, your money and stay right, poor right, because right. that's what you need. Like, to Come on. Right. Meanwhile, I got private jets <laughs> yeah, yeah, making 600k right. a year, yeah. doing all this stuff. But that's you because need God more needs to me. Spread the gospel, there you go. Right? God needs me to have <laughs> no, this no, jet. No. But so that's the question. It's like, are we sure that that's what God meant when He said, "Go spread my word," so you could keep people under you to do <laughs> your work for me, or do you need them to do? Do you need everyone to do my work? Right? That's that's one of the things about religion is so open to interpretation that yeah. science isn't, and I feel like science has. Well, I was gonna I say feel science, like science has less is capacity. Open to interpretation. No, it's not. Like you said, like you're not gonna say. You, you know, it's cosine squared plus sine squared really one. Yes, that's not open for no, interpretation. No, but, that, but that's actual fact, though. It's exactly. not. It's not theory. Theory is open to interpretation, though. Like evolution theory is open to interpretation. Like, okay, this thing didn't age in the way we thought it did, or like this dog didn't actually come from like from this wolf. Or might came from like a there might have been like a different a species of coyote that you, the dog came from. Theory, so that's open to interpretation. Yeah, but not that actual much. Fact, not, not a theory is like the highest no, regard but, that a, yeah, the it scientific is, but community the, can it, give but to. But it's a theory because you can't absolutely prove it. Does because it you need factual, like substantial evidence for to the, change for, for a theory? Of course. No, no, for, oh. for like the scientific, like for the scientific process to be amended. Do you need? Substantial evidence, like something factual to prove. Yeah, but that's what's Honestly, going on with gravity. By, as by long, theory. but that's what's going on with gravity. Bro, as now. long as there's one example where this theory doesn't maintain itself, it's completely discarded. The fact that theories last so long is impressive as hell. Because mm-hmm. if there's anything that disproved without a doubt that evolution never happened, we'll get rid of that theory altogether. But there hasn't been any definitive proof that this isn't what happened. And there's a lot of a lot of evidence contrary. that suggests yeah. that this is what happened. Right. But the theory yeah, yeah. that long. Right. That's true, but I don't, should, I don't that. think we should. Of course, it's the, not up for interpretation. The, the, for how long it's been around to. No, you, with the scientific fact. community, yeah. the longer it's been around, that's the but more the impressive. The theory of gravity in the way that Isaac Newton did mm-hmm. it was like, oh, the, I forgot the formula for it, but now, it did, now what we're looking at, or scientists are looking at, I should say, is that gra- there's like gravitational force and gravitational waves. It doesn't work in the same idea that I, that right. no one had even though okay. there was substantial that's evidence to support his theory and, and there's been it, hap- it happened in other situations where sure. there's substantial evidence to support that theory but it's ended up being com- something completely that different completely though. like just disrupts it and that's fine right. yeah I feel like in religion you almost need a catalyst to sort of get a different opinion approved and adopted whereas in science you don't necessarily need that catalyst like take for example like the dark ages in Europe like when scientists were saying the earth was round or that we revolve around the sun, that was cause for death by torture. There you go. 
Meanwhile, like... Uh, and if that was still around, I'm sorry to cut you off, but you're going to continue. If that was still around, then, of course, I would be more readily accepted than open mm -hmm. for interpretation. Right. right. And meanwhile, in, like, in like anthropology, in the science of anthropology, for example, it's like people can say, like, like Australopithecus afarensis is, like, the, the earliest form of human we have when we start to look for the evolution of Let's apes. Say that again. Astral Australopithecus afarensis. I mean, we're saying Harry Potter spells. <laughs> But it's like, I took, how many layers of line we took? I took four years of line? Yeah, I think I took four I have no idea what this man just said. Yeah. <laughs> what a waste. <laughs> what a waste. Bro. Bro. Um, so like if Pretty Australopithecus, uh, uh, Australopithecus afarensis is the earliest form of bone we Boys, have. have the earliest, podcast, the earliest, <laughs> we're putting that one up, it's going to be the earliest form of, of, Homo sapien you have mm -hmm. um, after ape and before homo actual homo sapien. If that's mm -hmm. going to be the first one we see be evolved, and you're going to have that marked down. But later on, another group of scientists comes out and they discover and prove that there was another um, late ancestor of ours in between the Australopithecus afarensis and the uh, and an ape. Mm -hmm then the scientific community, if they see enough proof, they're going to be like, okay, yeah, that exactly. actually that makes sense. And yeah. that's not even an interpretation but question. That's just... But look what you just said. The thing has been around for so long that people will, will be willing to accept right. that the original And you can be fact, wrong. You can accept something that might not be true. But my, my point in that was that... Can God be wrong, though? No. God is all-powerful, all-knowing, omnipotent, omniscient, yeah. all, you know, ever-present, whatever. He can't be wrong. You can misinterpret the message. There you go. And here's the thing, so... But how do I interpret the message if he never talks to me? You gotta I mean, trust the people you, who you he talks to. to. The way you, you like speak you. to God is, is up for you to define as yourself. No, I, I get that, yeah. but how do you interpret the message if you don't... Like you go see your church leaders. That have actually. political agendas. But they know the message better than anyone, supposedly. That's that's what that's uh, what it's supposed to be, right? That's the hierarchy. Hey, man, a lot of things are supposed to be great. And man. here's the thing with the if, the... if I break my ankle, I'm supposed to be able to go to the doctor and get it fixed, but then I get hit with a $30,000 bill. You don't want 43 herbs and spices? No, I don't. <laughs> no, I, 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 don't. <laughs> I really don't know what this means. <laughs> here's the thing with this interpretation thing, right? So God is, let's say, arguably God is truth, right? God is never wrong. God, he's right in the past. He's going to be right now. He's going to be right in the future. That's what he's supposed to be. That's okay. not going for interpretation. Okay, 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 okay. When it comes okay. to science, when it comes to science, one of my math teachers told me, told me this uh, years and years ago, which really stuck with me. He said, there is no truth in, in the universe except for one thing. And do you know what that thing is? It's numbers. Yeah, I like that. Numbers yeah. never, ever lie. What, what numbers have, were in the past, they're going to be right now, they're going to be in the future. One plus one was two. Five million years ago okay. is two now. It's always going to be two. So numbers are truth. Can it not change depending on how complicated the formula is, though? Like, aren't some formulas like kind of like not, if you do not necessarily open-ended, but there is so much variance in between that one thing could throw it off? But if you put in the same numbers in that formula, you're going to get the same result every single time. If you do the formula correctly. Well, if the formula is actually like incorrect, though, like I'm saying, like the distance formula isn't what you thought it was. No, but the numbers will still tell you what you're supposed to get. All right. Yeah. Right. All so right, if right. any, if there's any errors in the formula, that's be, that's human error. Okay. And so if we can find truth in numbers and God is truth, doesn't that mean God and science are that closely related? God, uh, I'm not gonna say God is numbers because no, he's <laughs> not. But I think I think God is based in science because th th this guy that we were listening to, he said that, you know. S studying nature allows us to see the way that God thinks. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, this the whole creationism versus, you know, evolution or, you know, intelligent design. Mm -hmm. When you can understand that, you know, cosine squared plus sine squared is one, and that makes us solve so many things. That makes so many things make sense. And it's crazy that this just coincidentally happened to be what it was. You don't think that's by design? You don't think that's how God thought? And so understanding science could very well bring you closer to God. In theory, it could. But then the book of God says something completely different, though. The book of God doesn't talk about scientific theory or mathematical no, equations. but it says this thing was created this way and because I God, think they... You know what I'm saying? In my mind, I feel, like, I feel like the Bible simplified a lot of things. I feel like they might have 
you know, took some artistic liberties or sped some things up. <laughs> one, th- one, thing that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> one thing my dad told me really early on that helped me understand, you know, God working in mysterious ways and sort of consolidating what we read in the Bible with what we have to believe or choose to believe in life is, is like uh, education wasn't offered to everyone in the ages when the Bible was being written. So anecdotes and narratives had to be created for people to understand things in simple terms. And in order for you to get a message or a theme across, a lot of times you have to you have to color it up in a way that is going to resonate with people. Mm. So we don't necessarily have to believe that, you know, A, B and C <clears throat> happened when the whole point of story with A, B and C variables was be a good neighbor. Yeah, right. but, look, but look how that sounds. That's so easy to manipulate, though. But now, it's like yeah. be a good neighbor. Mm-hmm. But then if you don't be a good neighbor, God's going to flood the earth. Like it's so easy to manipulate. Do you not see that? Yes. Like, how do you explain? My, how issue, do you explain natural disasters? The issue that I have with that is that, not I get that, but then don't turn around and portray that as the absolute truth. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you but when you God came has up with to be these, the absolute you know, truth, but you though. came up with the Bible with the stories with the anecdotes in order to portray a particular message. But now, now we're taking now we're taking the, the truth. now we're taking the liberties of even saying the Bible stories are are anecdotes. Mm-hmm. They might not be anecdotes. Mm-hmm. A lot of people believe the Bible. Uh, that's what I'm saying though. because fact, like yeah, yeah this this is what's in the yes, bible has that's happened my issue mm-hmm. that they that like Kyle's dad said it started off being antidotes to make it simplified and more accessible right even though it wasn't entirely accurate in what exactly happened but, but now we're taking what happened now we're taking the anecdotes mm-hmm. as the truth now they're portraying that as the truth instead of what it originally was which is my issue with it but then how do you know what's true then like how, how would you know? How would you know it's not an anecdote? It's because you're able to find some scientific <coughs> evidence that doesn't support the, like, like you're not able to find scientific evidence of a man living in the whale for three days, right? You can't find any, like, it's not possible to do that. But now what's the... I think the, that was the story that made me like, huh. <laughs> 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 there's, 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 there's a few, there's a few. But you have, you have that story, and then, like, what's the moral of this story to follow God? But then you can, not only can you not put that another way, well, it would be much more realistic. You don't have to dumb it down that much. Like a guy living in a wheel sounds more like fairy tales and something that actually happens. Mm-hmm. To but us, now, but now, to us, because no. now we understand how whales work. And, uh, no, you know, all that I think stuff. I think any I think any sane person <laughs> knows they can't live in another human being, another living organism. But look at how big a whale is. <laughs> And on next week's <laughs> yeah, I'm going, I'm animal size. I'm going, I'm going, if you're living in 500 BC, I'm going home, if you're living in 500 BC, home, you're this living in 500 BC, <laughs> and you never had a textbook on animals or what whales are like, <laughs> do you think you're gonna know the anatomy of a whale? So look how big a whale is, bro. You think in 500 yes, BC, in 500 you're gonna BC know they knew, bro. that whales? In 500 BC, that given how big whales are, a human can't fit inside of it and stay there for a little bit. Yes, in 500 BC, I, don't, I, don't know, I right. think they knew that you can't get you can't get eaten by another animal and still be chilling, bro. I think they do that. I, I hope they I hope they do that. Were whales visible in Galilee, like where the Bible was being written? Are they uh, natural around there? Because you know how, like in the 1500s, when they started leaving out and exploring the oceans, they were like, "What are these demons?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope so. Yeah. I mean, what's in the Bible? It has to be, has to be true, right? Man said whales, bro. Look how oh, big they are, <laughs> bro. Stop it! I'm, I'm really about to go. I'm home, talking so. from the perspective of someone who lived in that time. But if you use those anecdotes and, and and just living in a whale, you can you can create anecdotes that are dumbed down. And have some sense of plausibility. Though. And so, do you feel like that's one of the now issues with science now that it's not so accessible? It hasn't been dumbed down enough for people to really accept it, and so that's why I think a lot of people deny it. I like think the warming. idea behind science is we're going to educate people enough so they can understand it. You don't have to understand. You don't have to understand quantum theory. You don't have to understand like E equals M C squared or whatever. But I will educate you enough as a society so you can understand the basic principles behind it. So we're so. Like, you and what's what the benefit of that? So what's the benefit of understanding the underlying principles? So what's the benefit of being educated in science and the benefits of being educated in religion? The benefits of being educated in religion, it can hold your moral high. You have, like, a moral stance to stand on. I think it's because people need to know that life has meaning. Yeah. Like, people look to religion to be like, what happens in the end? Is this mm-hmm. all for naught? Mm-hmm. Like, f- the idea of faith, to believe in something without having to see it, to know it's true. Think like, like as human beings, like from our origin, we have been searching for meaning and reason. Mm-hmm. And for most of us, I want to say, you have some sort of personal religion 
that guides you, directs you towards what that meaning is. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a good person, you'll benefit in the end because you'll have eternal salvation. Meanwhile, like you could choose not to believe anything and that nothing matters, but then like what drives your decisions? So being yeah. educated in religion, that can give you moral guidance and a purpose that in life like, yeah, and like a foundation for yourself, yeah. for your identity, right. for your being. Right. And so now when it comes to science, now you're educated in that and now in my eyes, not only do you understand the world around you, but now you can understand God a little bit more as well. Right. I feel like they're but not do you understand explosive. God? Do you understand God more? Because like you're, you you're, you're interpreting as like, oh, this is how God thinks. What if God doesn't even need to use those formulas though? Like yeah, all all those formulas you just mentioned. Like he, I'm God. I can do whatever. Like I'm I can, sure he create. I'm yeah. sure there was there's rules and stuff that he created to. Make, Are there rules to, though? To put it to make what he did possible. But didn't he? If give there's us rules, doesn't that limit the power of what he actually can do though? If he has to abide by these things, it, he doesn't it, have to abide by them. So why do the rules matter if he's all powerful? If he's no, all, he can, if, he can if, work if, miracles. That's what a miracle but is. But if he's all powerful, he can forego those rules. So you really don't know how he thinks then. No, he Because like, if I have this rule about one plus one equals two, but I'm God, so I can make five plus eight equal two. But he didn't. Then what does it matter? How do you know that? You don't because know because one plus one is not eight. The way God created it, might have been. It might have been eight. And though. if it was that's eight, what I'm then saying. it was going to be eight. Then it was going to no, be eight. It's not, no, 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 no. It's not. No, That's you. That's you putting that on God. I'm saying if God is able to make 5 plus 8 equal 2, uh -huh. but your theory, your human life application makes it 1 plus 1 equals 2, uh -huh. God is able to forego that rule, and you don't know how he thinks now. Do you not understand that? Like, God does not have to You're play... You're talking about a miracle. I'm talking about how 5 God... 5 plus 2 equaling 8 like changing would be a miracle. basic rules, right? That God doesn't have to abide by. Yeah. Just keep going, just keep going. Yeah, no, I hold think... On, hold on, we gotta, we gotta clap again. You say changing the uh, say changing the basic rules again. All right. Like changing the basic rules. Right? Yes, that God doesn't have to abide by. I mean, I feel like at the at the core, the core meaning is like if He made it able for us to be able to understand these things or interpret them in our way, then that's a natural thing for us to be able to do. Because he gave us that power to do, like, it's okay to do. Which is fair. Yeah. But that doesn't mean God has to play by those rules. If, I'm, if, if, if I'm God, why do, I want, why do I want my creation knowing how I did this shit? Like, I'll, what's, I'll, the, what's, the, what's the harm in that? They can't change it. They can't bend the rules themselves. They, they can't. But then they might figure out something that they're not supposed to figure no, out. And now, can, we start, now they can now get closer to me. Now we, start, now we start cloning each other. And now we start, having, now we start finding ways to... Uh, how do you know God's going to be mad at that? We start calling each other. We find ways to be immortal. We find ways to come back from the dead. How do you know God's gonna be mad at that? Um, I, I, I we have I, no idea. We don't. But I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> sure he wouldn't be happy if he made the decision to say you're gonna be mortal, and then we just find ways to make us immortal. We start I, 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 I think maybe he, be, he just made us nah, take the long way I, back I, to it. You don't he, know that. I think he'd be pretty upset. Yeah. I think he'd be pretty he upset. He just made us take the long way back to if it. If there's no death, if immortal. there's no death for you, if you gain some super secret serum, or you just find ways to keep coming back from the dead every time you die, I think he'd be pretty upset. That's, just, that's my guess. Your, just your opinion. That's my guess. I feel like he'll be like, all right, you achieved immortality, come back to the Garden of Eden. I, but would science, yeah, that's where we immortal. Would yeah. science applaud us for that? For being able to get to that point? Yes. Of course. Of course. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Course. 100%. Okay. I mean, science is always trying to find if ways to like, slow down the cells. aging person, yeah. slow down the aging, or live longer, all this type of stuff. You know how much impressive medical applications that will have that will save thousands, millions of lives? Right. But destroying them first. Oh, you see, I'm actually happy you brought this up. And this is another moral aspect where science, though, lacks a ton of morality, mm -hmm. right? So science, uh, let's use the wonderful U.S. healthcare system. Oof. Okay. Right? Here we go. So we have, we have the science to save thousands of thousands of lives mm -hmm. with just something as basic as insulin. Mm -hmm. But what do we do behind these ingenious discoveries? Mm -hmm. Exactly. We That's just not raise science raising the prices. Huh? That's not science raising the But it's the lack the of morality, and we can see the evils behind science. The scientists don't determine the prices. I no, but I uh, think it's uh, the, the people that are in charge of the science yeah, companies. Yeah, the businesses and, do. The and business sometimes do. they're in the same boat, though. Sometimes the science person is the same business person. Like the scientists can be bought out. Yes. Yeah, so not, yeah, not, not only, not like, only that. I get what you're saying, but it's hard for me to grasp that, because I'm thinking about like big pharma. And yes. the reason that those prices are so high isn't because of the people who develop the drugs. It's because of the CEOs and the board. And, you know. But, but the it could be, it could be intertwined, is They'll go into the, the hospitals and they'll find the physicians and they'll say, like, listen, for every one of these RXs you push, like, you get a 1% cut on the sales. 
And then the physician is inclined to do that because, you know, I don't know why surgeons who save lives aren't paid as much as celebrities are. I mean, you're literally saving lives. Exactly. So that's where they go to for alternative, in alternative income. And it's like, it's because we allow that, that direct connection, that sale to happen, that that's allowed to and happen. And so the scientist is going around and, okay, so I have the drug, pa I have like the drugs, I know the formulas, the patents for all this type of stuff. Yeah, but they don't have I the see implementation. I see people dying. The scientist will make a great pastor. I, uh, I, I don't know about that, but sure. But you can see that. You're saying it's, the it's church a, never exploited something for money? <laughs> We're putting this morality burden on science when the church and other religions have done pretty much the same thing. But in the religion aspect, though, they, they have that implicit, like, oh, you do this, you're a good person type thing. Mm. The science, yeah, science, that's, that's and for science, you do this, you live. Yes. Or you get not, rich. It's not you're a good person. Or yeah. Like, I'm worried about my morality now. But there's still a payoff. What's, what's the payoff? For religion, it's a morality payoff. For yeah, science, science, it's actual a money payoff. It's a recognition payoff, right? Oh, like yeah. Like, like, yeah, it's book. like it's like a, a curious... Or oh, you just figured something out that you were just really curious about. Like, you yeah. figured out how apes got here. You always want to know. And I found the breakthrough. You know, you got a and reward. They, yeah. I mean, but not, you might not even get a reward. But you just got the satisfaction of, like, I was able to figure something sure, out. Sure, but we're talking about how they were raising prices, and their reward for that is the bigger checks. Yeah. Right. Which is the same for the religious people who say... Uh, if you want to be in my church, mm -hmm. you got to tithe at least 50% mm -hmm. every single week or you got to get out of here. And I mean, I think... Uh, and I think you know, and, that's fair. That's fair. That's actually fair. You can kind of get down to this, like, this, this sort of core understanding, too, that you cannot sway science as much as as politics has been able to sway religion, whereas a lot of times mm. in history... Mm. Global whereas, warming no, no, something but, different, No, no, but feel. whereas a lot of times... No, they're not swaying the science, you're just... As a lot... But, but here's the able thing... Able to sway public opinion, but, able to have science... No, no, but I'm think sorry, about this. It's like a lot of... In human history, how many times has a person who is power-driven used the platform of religion to get to where <laughs> they needed to be politically, <laughs> as opposed to, like, the core of a lot of science has been, like has been individuals who want to prove or understand why something works and has and have achieved an un that understanding and passed it on for the benefit of humanity. The, the last sentence what I was going at. Depen mm. Yes. Okay. Okay. You know what? The Pythagorean theorem was for the benefit of humanity. And I haven't used it. Was it really? Yeah, exactly. Was it really that stupid ass <laughs> theorem I got learned in high school that's not applicable? That theorem, bro? Hold on. That theorem, man? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let me know, man. Let me know. Yeah, that stupid ass theorem that I still haven't used one day in my you life. You might not use it, but it has benefited your life. Yeah, so everyone in high school should like, well, what? Yeah. Huh? Bridges, buildings, any, in oh, any so, speed so, of engineering so, 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 that you currently so everyone have in high the school, pleasure of experiencing. Everyone in high school should learn that because some engineers or architects might use it. It's benefiting you. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. It's benefiting You're me. You're sitting here, and it was used for you to be able to sit here. Is that what this all takes? That's all it takes. That's amazing. So anything that benefits you, Kyle. Did you learn about farming? Farming really benefits you. You should. Man, I just wish I you learned know how something. to do my taxes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there you go. You should have learned nope, something. Nope, nope. Pythagorean theorem is more important than your taxes. Mm -hmm. That's I'm why not you, saying it's more important than taxes. Hey, I'm saying it benefits it's you. Very, it's a very <laughs> loose thing. A lot of things benefit me, sir. It's very loose. And you should bro. know about that. No, no, no. <laughs> very, very loose. Anyways, man. Uh, yeah, th that theorem explains. You know what that theorem explains? It explains, like, uh, it does explain all the hurricanes and all that type of stuff? All the hurricanes, the tornadoes. That just, theorem, no. that just that just sweep up good people. Is there is there a theorem for that though? There's there's predictive models. No, no. Is there a theorem for that? That's what I'm asking. I don't know. What is, there th is, there, is there a theory for that? There Excuse are me. Is predictive there, models. Is there a theory for that? What Excuse would the theory me. be for? That? I don't know. I mean, I hear, I, hear, I hear the religious theory about you know God's like, punishing people for like three strikes and you get a hurricane. <laughs> it's like if you're unholy, you'll flood the earth, mm. like that type of thing. Or send a swarm of locusts yeah. to what, kill your babies. Sounds something? fucked up. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Which I hear that. I hear that theory, and that's kind of one of those religious well, versus like religious versus science thing, where it's kind of it's kind of liberating if you just accept the theory that God's punishing you if you do. Something no, 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 no. It's liberating if you just accept that bad things are just going to happen to people regardless of like who you pray to, right? It's not if I pray to this God. Is it? Yes, it is liberating because now you're not in this. You're not in the cycle of. If I'm not holy, if I'm not pray, or or not even me personally, 
but us as a society. If we don't, if we don't do things correctly, we will be punished for it. And you hear that all the time. It's like, oh, why did God, uh, why did this place get hit by a hurricane or a tornado? At places cool. that are like. What? They stop praying in school. Exactly. You hear that theory all the time. And that's the theory from you hear from most people where as opposed to if you're like a more science based person, it's just okay, sometimes you just get bad luck and that's it. There's no but you're there's saying no there's reason. there's relief in that scientific and that acceptance. Oh uh, maybe like relief, relief maybe relief isn't the isn't the, the right religion. word. I feel like there's relief in the How is there relief in a religion where it's oh if I don't do this then you're getting punished? Right? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there because this human nature to look for purpose yeah. in tragedy. But I feel like And we find that purpose. Through God? When you say But the all powerful one that punishes you is the one who give you the purpose. No, but I think but I think on the, the same topic of natural disasters, we are, we also get warnings and signs from science where it's like stop emitting greenhouse gases or else the air quality is going to Yes, and that has nothing that has nothing to do with the theories of being punished for being unholy though. No, no, but you're being you're punished for you're still being punished for doing the wrong thing. Like, don't kill the earth if you want to be able to breathe. Yes, but that's a scientific thing. That's not a religious thing, though. Well, yeah, but isn't that the like, like we need to find a connection between God punishing for not following his his lessons, his mm-hmm. ways. Regardless if I follow his lessons or not. No, but he's saying that we're being punished because we keep emitting greenhouse gases. Yeah. But that's where is that? that where is doing. that in the Bible? No, it doesn't have to be. Like, science we were the has warden- it in the same way No, no, no. It, it is in the Bible because we're supposed to be the, the wardens or the, the caretakers of the earth, and we're yes. killing it. And so we're doing something bad, and so we're being punished. But greenhouse gases, though? Greenhouse gases is killing the earth. It's wiping out species of animals. Yes, but if you're... Taking, you know how many animals I mean, died no, in the I'm Australian wildfire? I'm not, I'm not debating Half that. Half a million animals this, died in the Australian wildfire. This is something that can't be foreseen, though. Like greenhouse gases. Like yeah, people, it, people back then don't even know what greenhouse gases are. But we know so I feel like that's a very loose interpretation to attribute to... To greenhouse gases, like I'm, I'm talking more like natural disasters. We're talking about things. people with faith and belief. It doesn't need to make complete sense. That's that's the that's the jump that faith has implicitly. It doesn't need to make you complete know, sense. You know what makes sense? What makes sense is that okay, there's no punishment or anything behind this. What's the relief just, in that? Where's the relief behind that? Yeah. Whereas I don't have to worry about how <clears throat> I personally live my life or how we as a society live our life, knowing that I can be punished at any time because. These people aren't doing what's in this book. Like, what what kind of what kind of message is that? Is because like, I can, and the thing is, it happens to holy people too, where I'm the person that's praying to God, mm-hmm. but I'm still one of those people punished because the people around me are being devilish and unholy. Mm. Like, do you understand? Do you not understand that? Whereas, as opposed to if I if I have that acceptance that this just happens to people. Good, anywhere bad things happen to good people yes if that's i just have that acceptance is. and that's just what it is mm-hmm. then i'm not gonna walk around like okay i have to do this or i'm gonna get punished all the time do you not like you know what okay, i'm saying there's relief in that sense yeah, yeah. i see that i see that i see that right. I, that's what i see i think the natural disaster i think that's one of the things that really turn people off to religion mm-hmm. that's what people will side with science more versus religion because you anytime so? yeah oh 100 anytime people anytime there's natural, so? anytime these natural disasters happen there's a lot of people mm-hmm. or maybe not a lot of people but a lot of a decent number of loud people that advocate this is God's punishment for not doing this. This is for us accepting this into our society. Right. All this type of stuff. Yeah. And, I mean, you can believe that or not. But then what, what's your other explanation for it? You have the all-powerful God that's allowing these things to happen. But he gave us free will, so we're actually... You don't have free will over hurricanes, sir. No, but he's... You do not have free wills over well, random choices. I thought you meant like he's no. allowing us to actually make bad choices. That's yeah, what I thought yeah, you meant. Yeah, but, he, I mean, he's, he, yeah, he but, gave us free will so we can do that if we wanted to. Yeah, but you don't have free will over hurricanes. No, you don't no, have free no, will yeah. over random hurricanes no, or tornadoes. Don't. Like, they just happen. They just happen. You do not control that. Well, to some extent, you can't affect them. You can try to safeguard yourself from them. No, and like you can't, the you can't affect You can't affect them with global warming. Climate like, change yes. is making hurricanes more But then powerful. how many people is that? Is that you as a society, or is that just these few powerful people no. that are able to dictate everything? More so the problem with people, but to society in I mean, the society, to, right? to some extent. The society, not really, though. If you don't have the choice of being able to choose. Like, everything's... everything's well, not, yeah, not, to random, not to go on the random, not to go on the random spiel, yeah, yeah, yeah. not to go on the random spiel, yeah. but everything's interconnected, right? Mm-hmm. So it's much cheaper to shop from Amazon than it is from your local convenience store that's not fucking up the environment, mm. right? But I shop at Amazon because I am poor and I can't <laughs> afford to shop at my convenience store that charges six dollars f- for a thing of milk. And it's also probably more cost effective to get a car that might have worse mileage. And less gas efficiency than right. you know, exactly. Or something. So it's, everything's interconnected. So you just can't yeah. see. You can't just be like, oh. I don't do this, and everything's gonna be good. Mm-hmm. I see what you mean. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas the, so I think that's one aspect where you're comparing science versus religion. I mean, I'll definitely be on the science side. 
Well, I'd hope to believe, and I hope, I hope, I'd hope to believe if you're a religious person and you're uh, you're praying to your gods, you're, you're living life whatever, and you're a religious person, you're not trying to find any justification. Yeah, but I can see how you can put things. those. I can say you can put science and religion together in that situation. Though. Mm-hmm. How? Like what I said, like God thinks that the greenhouse gas emissions are bad. Yes, he can. And think, therefore, but he can think that, but he also knows your powerless in that situation because of all the economic. Factors, not even, not only think, economic factors, but just all the bro, factors of life. Do you life. think everyone in Egypt deserved to die when he sent the plague? So I'm gonna pray to that God that made everybody die because some people that were in charge were. I'm were just dumb. saying he's being consistent. You know, they <laughs> they consistently asshole, just asshole. I guess. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> that, that's what we're doing. Hey, bro. Hey, yo, yo. Asshole. Hey, Kyle, man. <laughs> Your man, your man's out here. Well, I'm saying your man's out here killing people with lotus, bro. That's not even a, that's not even a nice death. And everybody gets a lotus death. Not just the, not just the, not just the bad people. Everybody gets a lotus death. Not just the bad people, Kyle. Everybody gets lotus. That sounds like an asshole thing to do, bro. I'm just saying. That's I'm not an asshole thing to do. God's man. moral, you know, standing. Uh, but I'm just saying there is a way it has to combine. To be, it has to be good if God is all good, though. And religion when it comes to natural disasters. I very loosely. And the whole very thing, loosely. Yeah, but the whole question is, very can loosely. you can you believe in both and? You, are the ways it's to like combine a, it's them like both? It's like a ninety ten thing, and that and, and natural disasters. I mean, I'm I'm saying very loosely. I'm like yeah. giving like a five to ninety five percent chance. Uh-huh. Maybe that's all. It, that's all it takes. Oh, man. I don't think so. Man, not I'll be enough say. for you, but it's enough for some people. Yeah. Is it enough for you? I I mean, I feel like having the freedom to believe that something works because we used our free will to make the wrong decisions for our planet and those are the consequences but and having a god to pray to for forgiveness and to make to enlighten the human race so we stop making these <laughs> mistakes is a, is a medium i have to work I, with within the realm of possibilities hey you can work within that realm but how realistic is it though or how even plausible is it I like mean, I, like I, I like i said it's not really us as a society. Like, we're not. We can all ban straws. Hey, great job, guys. We ban <laughs> straws. We saved the turtles. <laughs> How much of an effect does that really have? We can put all that pressure on that, but then we try to put the pressure on the things that really matter. We don't have that much pool. Those guys have more money than all of us combined. Meat consumption. That's where you start. What? So we just kill them? What? Elect new people? <laughs> 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 That's a bit of a jump. (laughs) (laughs) I think we regressed a little bit. I like these people. I mean, those, uh, those people we like are just not, 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 <laughs> not Those people we like are not able to hold them accountable enough. I man. mean, hey, anyone who's ever <laughs> watched <laughs> the Borgias knows that the papacy wasn't used, you know, for the benefit of all as much as it was used for the benefit of certain families at a certain point. And, and that's how I it mean, usually goes. I mean, I think it was in the 12th century that priests weren't allowed to, to get married anymore. And the reason for that, as far as, as I was taught, is because when they passed on their sons inherited the their goods from the church and the church wasn't happy about losing what it had gained during the oh priesthood. wow that's and why. so and so they were like whoa 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 we got to cut this off so instead of saying we keep your stuff you just can't get married at all or have a yeah. family at all yeah because then you don't run into that risk wow. see here's the other thing what about the history behind religion like religion has been used historically as a very controlling type thing mm-hmm. but science hasn't the science has but not in this sense i where feel like science dom- is going to be I think on that level yeah, it and will be chips and yes stuff but it hasn't put dominated like right. life like that and so, I, no i think we i think an interesting place we see this for science is in like clickbait articles right where it's like you'll oh, have an article that's like like says, one chocolate bar a day yes, I, I was like, say le- extends your life five years but you and know it's what? like one variant in that study <laughs> happened to eat a chocolate bar and so they can technically <laughs> say that a chocolate bar led to the result is that the scientist's fault or is i feel like that's the news i feel like that's the news's fault though yeah, yeah my example for that was like um no like, i had the same chocolate bar like as phones yeah. like fingerprints and face scan and like yeah face recognition yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that could be easily used to track you or to put you in a database and that mm-hmm. science being used against you to control you so it's, that's like the, that mind. Yeah. it's like the safer society requires less freedom. Now, they, well, yeah. Do you guys remember that movie? I think the movie was called Gallica or something like that. Gallica. Uh, Gallica. Remember <clears throat> that thing we learned in, in biochem, where it was the how the. It's in a space movie. No, it was like it was this movie about society. I, I think it's called Gallica, but I don't remember. Is that with Christian Bale? No, no, okay, no, Christian Bale, no, Christian Bale. 
but it was something about how like the DNA connects to each other, like the G's and A's and T's. It was something we learned in biochemistry a while ago. Okay. But then it's like, and now it's a, it's actually an issue now. And my job, someone at my job talked about it, where you can like pre-make your babies. Oh yeah, genetic modification. Yes. Oh, and I've heard of that. Yeah, it's yeah. it's like the there's a, a cool name for it. <laughs> cool name for it. <laughs> cool in quotation marks. A cool and that's, name for it. And that's going to be a huge, it's almost like the playing God thing where it's just Yeah, a you huge get to pick and choose what right. genes your baby has. Kids yeah, wants like how attractive he is no or how attractive he might be in your eyes. Yeah. yeah. What type of mute, how tall he's going to be. Like, yeah. You just give him the chances to be taller, yeah. blue blue, high, uh, blue eyes, blonde Are we hair. Are right. those babies in the Olympics? I mean, <laughs> you can have that question yeah. too. And then what happens if everyone's baby's like that? And the movie was just like, if everyone's baby is genetically modified but then you have this one kid who you had this one famous baby was not genetically modified oh that's interesting and he gets shit on the whole entire i want to see that movie now that yeah. sounds he that's gets, a very interesting I'm not, premise. I'm not gonna i'm not gonna spoil it for you then but he gets shit on the entire movie he's like mm. it's like you're not a purebred like that type of thing yeah and i think science could head in that direction yeah so then, if science does that, ah, oh, you see, it actually interesting you said that. So yeah. science might not be better than religion on yeah. any moral like, type high ground. Even for the liberation high ground, won't be better on, right. that, on that thing. It can go too far the same way the church has. Yeah. It can't, yeah. Yeah, I feel like science is oppression is in the future. Right. AI. Mm-hmm. Yo, yeah. do you, do you, uh, my brother told me about this. It was like, I think it was, who's Google's like voice assistant? I don't know if they have a name for it. Hey, Google. It was, like, it was like Siri and another AI, yeah. and they put them next to each other, and they started talking to each other. Mm-hmm. And they were talking, talking, talking really fast. And then the scientists realized that what they were saying wasn't what they were really saying. Their communication was actually deeper in the code. Mm. And because they're AI, they don't have to like wait and process things like we do. Like mm-hmm. If you say something or I say something, you got to listen, process it, think of a reply, and then say it. Mm-hmm. They don't do that. It's just like back to back to back. And they're just right. talking, talking, talking. And they're talking deep in the code where no one could see it until they find out, like, yo, they're having an entirely different conversation that we knew about, mm-hmm. and they're saying all this shit, and we couldn't find it until now. So they just shut all of it down, like just, wow. just scary shit. It's like how many movies have to be made before? We <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro, like, yeah, nobody's seen I Robot here, or nothing like that, man. Get, like get Elon Terminator, Musk right? Yeah. <laughs> like it's crazy. I feel like it's in the future. So who, who would you who would you trust more though? Then do you a trust scientist? Si- do, you trust, do you trust devout. science or or religious people more? It might, it might depend on the religion. Yeah, it depends on the religion. It might depend on the religion. I mm. mean, I feel like we've made it thousands of years with the religion, with the backs and forts. I don't know how long we'll make it with the science, and I don't know. But what if the find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, science takes over. I don't know who's gonna survive. Yeah. But it's just the us. science is just being. Oh, you don't know that though. Exactly. No, right. That's the thing. With the religion, you don't know that either, though. But I mean, has there been any war over like over over religion? Like. like Every single religion, like Buddhism, uh, or I don't know, bro. what's another like far fetched or yeah. not a popular religion here in the U.S. I don't know if there's been a war for every religion. I might listen to that, to that guy, maybe. I'm just going off like a Christian three, or a Catholic three or a Muslim or Abrahamic religions: uh-huh. uh, uh, Islam, uh, Judaism, Christianity. Um, I might take science. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 think, I'm taking, I think I'm taking science. <laughs> no offense, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, I think I'm taking science. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you. And that's not to say that I don't believe in God. Yeah. Right, but I mean, religion is different from but God. There's just so many ways to twist. And the thing is, here's the problem: like, it's hard. To, like, you're able to twist religion into being the right thing based off the book. Yeah. But you can twist science too. But can you? But you can't twist it off the moral ground for it to be better though can you like i don't think you can no you can't control people by just telling them what science is yeah you, you know what i'm saying but you can't, you can't if, if i if i quote the scripture of like why like oh slavery's in the bible so it's okay oh, and man. it's like is it really though or but science, they tried to do science that, too and they said black people are genetically inferior but that to was people. fake uh ah uh, you know what you see man this might just be a whole power thing though. <laughs> <laughs> Everything no, it's, is power. It's, it's true but that was fake though yeah, yeah but people in the re- believed it but in the religious sense it's supposed to be real and everyone has everyone has ability to access that scripture you know what i'm saying yeah i mean it's like everyone can read the bible but not we all everyone, know that people, not everyone don't, can people do don't look into things that are claimed even today when information is so readily accessible yeah like What's trump will say convenience? you know read the transcripts you go to trump probably have you read the transcripts no but I man we just on facebook instagram and ig man you know that's you know, what i'm saying i mean instagram and snapchat man. that's what everyone does man but anyways yeah well, let us yeah. know what you guys think <laughs> um this has been a very interesting discussion a I nice like. a nice a nice cool 
<laughs> level headed talk about religion, man. Yeah. And science. You don't get a lot of that. And science, man. You don't get a lot of that. Now, yeah, thank you for being yeah. so uh, open, so cool with it. Yeah. Even yeah. yeah. after we challenge some of your beliefs. He's going so. to have. He's gonna be the show you when you turn off this camera, man. <laughs> 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 what do you say about God? <laughs> say he's an asshole? <laughs> you say God's an asshole? Yo, come here real quick. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys want to hear from us next week, <laughs> his name is Kyle Alvin. <laughs> <laughs> but comment down below let us know what you guys think about this and let us know if you think that there is a way for science and religion to be reconciled in a major way man, I got you got anything I got nothing man I think that I think we just leave it right there yeah I just yeah. wanted to give shout out to the future Leo right here got the, you, got the, you got to look forward to you know that's what I'm saying future Leo, Leo Curry not David hey, <laughs> oh you do look like my David <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize until you said it <laughs> a special thanks to, to Kyle and, and like Khalil said uh, great question. We'll just leave it. Like on the Apple, video. On Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube. Share it with your friends. Wherever you listen to podcasts. Relate really what you guys think. Share with your friends. Listen to the audio. Subscribe to the channel. Help us continue the conversation. Yeah. There you go. See y'all next week. See you guys next week.